Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up eating corn on the cob every single summer. Is there another vegetable out there that kids love more than corn? I don't think so. But there's so much more that you can do with it than just eating it on the cob. I've got three quick and easy game-changing recipes that you should make today. We're gonna start off by making some corn fritters, but first, let's chat about that corn. Sound good? Let's cook. Now, I really wish there was some easy way I could tell you, once you look at corn still in the husk, that that one is perfect and in season and ripe, get that one. It doesn't really work like that. What you can do are two things. You can go to the grocery store and simply sort of pop one open, see what it looks like. Is it fresh? No brown spots, good to go. Corn kernels all the way up. The other way, and it's you know a little bit more of a secret that I always use, when I look at the tops of corn, okay, if it's real skinny and comes to a really quick point, it lets me know to me that the kernels have not expanded all the way to the top or it's starting to go bad. If it's a little bit thicker at the top, I know that I'm good to go. All right, now to peel these up and make corn fritters. A corn fritter is a simple fried dough that's been infused with fresh corn kernels. You could, of course, use canned or frozen corn as well. To be honest, it is very similar to a hoe cake or johnny cake, which is cooked with cornmeal and also very delicious. Now for this recipe, we're only going to need three fresh ears of corn. So again, just to remove the cob, just peel it right down on both sides. Make sure the corn looks really nice and try to remove as much of that silk as possible. Those are those little stringy things that are hanging all over the cob. And we're just gonna repeat that same process with the other two. Once you get all of the corn completely removed from the husk, and again, get all that silk off. In addition, all the silk that's on the cutting board, you definitely wanna get rid of that because, well, we're gonna trim some corn there. So going one ear at a time, holding it with one hand, slice down using a very sharp knife. You don't have to go all the way down on the cob. All that good sweet stuff is more on the outside. Then we're gonna set it to the side in a bowl. All right, so now we're gonna do is mix together dry ingredients with wet ingredients. I've got a cup of all-purpose flour. For a little sweetness, we're gonna add in one tablespoon of sugar. Next, to help it rise, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Next, one teaspoon of sea salt. And then I'm gonna add in a little secret, one tablespoon of packed cornstarch. Gonna make it nice and fluffy. Let's go ahead and add in some fresh ground pepper and then mix it until it's combined. Set that to the side, and in a separate bowl, I have a half cup of whole milk. You could use half and half or even heavy cream if you wanted to. We're going to add in two large eggs and also whisk those until combined. All right, now at this point, all we're doing is adding the wet to the dry. So just pour it in there, and then we're gonna whisk it until it's completely combined and mixed in, and then we'll get to the corn next. So give it a good whisk. Okay, you should have a nice consistency, much like a very thick pancake batter. At this point, we're just gonna set this to the side. Let's fold in our fresh corn kernels. Then we're just gonna start frying. Once the corn is completely folded in, we are going right over to the cooktop where I have a large nonstick skillet. We're going to add in a third cup of neutral flavored oil, turn the heat to medium or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, Comies, while my oil is heating up, there are pretty much two different shapes you can do when making fritters. I'm probably gonna do mine a little bit flatter. The other way is just to put a few dollops into some oil and let them fry up into a perfect round ball. Both ways are delicious. Either one is fine. Let's go. You simply want to take one to two tablespoons of the dough, put it right into the oil, use a rubber spatula to push it down, and then form it to a nice little circle. Now, this is not going to be perfect. I don't know any perfect circle fritters out there, so don't worry if it's not like that. We're going to cook it for two minutes, give it a quick flip, should be nice and golden brown, cook it for another two minutes until it's cooked throughout and golden brown, then set them to the side to drain on paper towels. And really it's time to plate up. Let's have a look of that beautiful fluffiness inside. This is perfect. There are two ways to serve this up, a savory and a sweet way. I'm going to first do this one on a plate, stack it high. I'm going to add a nice dollop of sour cream and then finish with some sliced green onions. The other one is a sweet way and very popular. Just drizzle on some maple syrup. Both are amazing. So good, so simple to make. I'm telling you, they are addicting. You're not gonna wanna stop after you eat one of them. I promise you that. Now, for one of my all-time favorite corn recipes known as elotes or Mexican street corn, I'm telling you what, if you've never had this and make it, it's going to be your new favorite corn recipe, I guarantee it. 
I've got a large pot of boiling salted water. It should be as salty as the ocean because this is what's going to season our corn on the cob, nothing else. So add in five ears of shucked corn. And at this point, turn the heat down to medium. We're going to put the lid on. It's going to take about 10 minutes for this to cook until it is nice and tender. Be sure to test it first. We're gonna come back, remove the lid. It's okay if some silk is in there. It usually floats to the top in the water. Use some tongs because it's very hot. We're going to remove them. Next, we're going to simply set them to the side on a plate. All right, the corn are obviously steaming, piping hot. We don't wanna to touch them yet. We're just gonna set them to the side for just a couple of minutes. Now, in the meantime, what we can do is make the little sauce that goes over top of the corn, and it's a combination, okay? I'm gonna be using a little bit of mayonnaise and a little bit of Mexican crema. If you cannot find this, sour cream is a great replacement. I've just got a third cup of each here. So what we're gonna do is just add this in there. And just mix it to combine. Once this is combined, really it's time to plate up. So using some shorter wooden skewers, we are gonna pierce the bottom thick part of the corn. This is going to act as our handle so that it's very easy to eat because this is messy. Next, I'm going to dip a brush in some melted butter and I'm going to generously brush each ear of cooked corn. Then we're going over to that tasty mayonnaise and crema mixture. We wanna generously brush the corn all over, make sure it's completely covered in this. I cannot stress that enough. Next, we're going to sprinkle on some crumbled cotija cheese. Another great cheese would be queso fresco. Just make sure it's coated all over that crema and mayonnaise mixture. And then I'm going to sprinkle on just a little bit of chili powder all around the outside. Just twist the handle, make sure it gets completely coated. And this part is optional, but I really like to add on some chopped fresh cilantro and serve it up with some sliced limes. I'm not kidding when I say this, you will be hard pressed to find a more flavorful corn side dish than elotes. Oh my gosh, so, so good. A couple things really quick. You know me, I can't handle the heat. I use chili powder. The other things you can use to definitely kick this up will be cayenne pepper, something known as piquin pepper, which is a little bit spicier, a small Mexican pepper, but if you love the heat, that's it. And then last but not least, tajin, which is sort of a chili powder with a couple other things mixed in. Okay, last but not least, one of my all-time favorites, succotash. Outside of this guy saying suffer in succotash, this recipe actually has deep roots in Native American cuisine, and it comes from the Narragansett Indian word miskatash, which means boiled corn kernels. But my guess is there were other things added in there like squash and three sisters, and it has absolutely become a very popular recipe in the South. Now the succotash recipe I was taught how to make almost pays tribute to this recipe in its entirety from the beginning to what it is now, using three sisters, the corn, the zucchini, and the beans. And because this dish is so popular in the South, I love to add things like bell peppers and okra, cooked in bacon, nothing better. We're gonna knock out some prep first and get cooking. One small diced yellow onion, two finely minced garlic cloves, one small diced red bell pepper, next a half medium diced green zucchini, five thinly sliced okra, and then I'm going to slice a half cup of cherry tomatoes in half. Then we're going to thinly slice four thick cut slices of bacon, once the prep is completely finished, looks fantastic. Going over to the cooktop, I have a large rondo over medium heat. You can use a cast iron skillet, a large frying pan, whatever you have. We want to cook these until they are browned up, which only takes about five minutes. At this point, remove the lardons to the side in a bowl. Go back over to that pan, add in the onions, the bell peppers, and the garlic. Now, if you're from Cajun country, you could make this the Trinity by adding in one rib of small diced celery. That one is optional. We're going to cook this for about five to six minutes or until it's lightly browned and tender. At this point, we are going to add in our corn kernels that we trimmed, followed up with our okra. Don't worry, I got the rest of those out of there. And then about a third cup of lima beans. Turn the heat up to high. We wanna saute this for about five to six minutes. Once the corn starts turning more yellow and the okra starts to become bright green, we know we are there. What we're gonna do at this point is add in the zucchini and the bacon that we cooked up. We're only gonna cook this for about two minutes. I want the squash to be nice and crisp. I don't want it to be mush. Then at this point, we are gonna turn the heat completely off. Let's finish it with our cherry tomatoes. Got one tablespoon of chopped fresh basil. We wanna season to taste with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Then just mix it in to infuse all those flavors until it is combined. 
then just remove it from the heat. And you know what? I did forget one crucial thing, and that's two tablespoons of butter. It was just melted before. That's why it looks like this. Mix it in. It will make it so buttery and so creamy. Do not skip out on that last one. And then to plate this up, you can serve it in the pan. It's very beautiful in there or a small casserole dish like the one that I'm using. Then I've got a little bit of leftover chopped base I'm going to put on there. And I have some sliced green onions left over from the fritter. So let's use that. And just in case you're wondering, like, what on earth would you do with the succotash? It is an amazing side dish served hot or room temperature or even cold. Put it next to a T-bone, pork tenderloin, chicken, fish, you name it. It goes amazing with everything, seriously. And it will always go back to these fundamental classic cooking techniques, like using a brush to get all of that goodness all over the elotes, or even putting in the cornstarch to make sure you got a nice fluffy corn fritter, rendering that bacon fat perfectly so that all of that goodness is seared in there. Putting together all of these things and putting them into practice will absolutely elevate your everyday cooking. It always does. So dang tasty. You can make all of these. We're looking at like 15 to 20 minutes for each of these. That's nothing. And if you love corn, oh my gosh, you have to check out my corn chowder recipe. It gets amazing reviews. I've got a great video. I'll see you on there. I don't even know where to start. So I'm gonna get into these elotes.